Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not pleased with Vice President Kamala Harris's speech in Guatemala, where she encouraged Guatemalan Guatemalans who are potentially thinking about migrating to the United States to stay in place and not come. Seems like AOC doesn't think that Kamala Harris deserves any cookies, and I agree with her. No cookies for you, I'm sorry. So the Biden administration keeps talking about how VP Kamala Harris is taking care of the migrant crisis and she's going to Mexico, she's going to Guatemala to handle it. Except her way of handling it is essentially telling Guatemalans that they shouldn't do something that is actually legal in the United States, which is seek asylum. Let's watch. I want to emphasize that the goal of our work is to help Guatemalans find hope at home. At the same time, I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come, do not come. We, as one of our priorities, will discourage illegal migration. And I believe if you come to our border, you will be turned back. So let's discourage our friends, our neighbors, our family members from embarking on what is otherwise an extremely dangerous journey. But what about legal means of immigration? Uh, the legal means that Donald Trump had crippled under his leadership. Biden claimed that he was gonna be different, but so far I haven't seen a difference in the way that he's handled immigration. And AOC called that out saying, first, seeking asylum at the US border is 100% is a 100% legal method of arrival. Second, the US spent decades contributing to the regime change and destabilization in Latin America. We can't help set someone's house on fire and then blame them for fleeing. And look, we've talked about how US foreign policy has destabilized Latin American countries like Guatemala. I'll give you those details again. But this is a classic case of the US government pretending as if we're being victimized by something. When in reality, the very thing that we're complaining about is what we contributed to, is what we caused. Cenk, what do you think? So the Biden administration is unsurprisingly stuck in the 1990s. So Biden thinks that he's going to get credit from Republican and independent voters if he meets Republicans halfway on immigration. Now to be fair to Biden, the mainstream media thinks the same thing. So they they keep attacking Biden, not on all of his failed promises where he was gonna be FDR 2.0. No, they love that he's failing on all of those. They keep attacking him from a right wing perspective. They ask Lester Holt, to ask Kamala Harris, have you been to the border yet? Have you done a what, a photo op at the border? What kind of a useless question is that? Uh, have you done the proper theatrics yet? The Republicans are displeased. Who gives a damn about the Republicans? They're not in charge, right? But Biden does care about them. So he sends Kamala Harris to go yell at people in Latin America. Don't come, don't come, okay? It's ridiculous. How many Republican votes you got from that? Zero, zero. I don't know, we're never gonna get through to Biden, no, it's obvious, we, we knew. That who he was from day one. The reason everybody voted for him because he is because at least he wasn't going to end democracy. Okay, that was a very, very, very low bar. He cleared that bar and he hasn't been able to clear much since then. I don't care what any person in Washington says about how great he is. He's not gonna save it either, that's yeah. for sure. Well, he's not gonna save it if he doesn't do a goddamn thing unless the Republicans come back in charge. So now, uh, Let's mention the other part of it, which is that man, did he stick Kamala Harris with political dynamite here, right? So she's gotta be pretty furious about it. There's no question that Biden told her to say, don't come, don't come. And I, and now, you know, I got no love for Kamala Harris. And so I know people, Oh, good you, she means so well. How do you know she means well? How do you know that? Why do you trust politicians? That take corporate money, like no, 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 no. I know they seem to be serving corporations and they seem to be going three quarters of the way towards the right wing, but I believe she's such a good person based on nothing, based on theatrics. So does Kamala Harris have a similar position to Joe Biden? Yes. Does she like having to hold this bag of poop 
which is the border crisis, so-called border crisis. No, no, Biden's like, oh, you maybe you're thinking of running in 2024? Here, here's the goddamn border. My biggest problem from the Republicans, and so he thinks that's his biggest problem overall because progressives who gives a damn about them, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, you go deal with them, and then you go to yell at Latinos to not come, uh, even if they have to flee violence that we partly created. And that's what she had to do there, and that's what happened. No, you're right, that is what happened. And I, look, I know you weren't trying to provide any excuses for that speech she gave. But I also have absolutely no sympathy for any type of backlash that she's currently getting as a result of that speech. I'm tired of the apologist for Kamala Harris's behavior, not just as VP, but when she was a prosecutor in California, right? The Well, then what can she do? I mean, this is just what the system is and she had to operate under that system. And even though she was in this wonderful position of power where she could have actually changed the system, she decided to go along with it, but what could she do? No, I'm not buying it. Even if Biden sent her there, no one forced her to say the words, don't come. No one forced her to spread the same kind of talking points that the Trump administration did in regard to asylum. Obviously, there are legal ways to get to migrate to the United States. And what she said in that speech was a little too vague. Like she mentioned illegal immigration at one point, but she's making it clear she doesn't want any of them to come. And for any US politician, whether they're Democrat or Republican, to utter those words given what the US has done to Guatemala specifically in backing a coup in the 1950s, which destabilized that country, it's disgusting and it's wrong. Period, we have to take responsibility for what we've done in the United States in destabilizing other countries. These things aren't happening to us. They're happening because we were the catalysts that led to the crises that we're experiencing today. That's it, period. When climate change and extreme weather conditions happen, they're not happening to us. We're not victims, we played a huge role in making it happen. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired of this, like, no, no, this is, we're victims. What could we do? No, there's a lot we can do. There's a lot we can do. And so, it's first take responsibility for what we've caused. So I advocated for, uh, for whatever it's worth, which is very little, uh, for a Marshall Plan uh, for El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. And so why? Uh, because Marshall Plans work. It's the single most successful foreign policy action the United States of America has ever taken. When we rebuilt Germany, Japan, and that's not all. They also built, rebuilt Greece, Turkey, and many other countries after World War II. And so what it did was it turned our worst enemies. And Germany, after fighting them in World War I and World War II, was by far the worst enemy the United States of America had ever had, right? We turned them into our top allies. And we turned them into economic powerhouses, which we then traded with and we all got richer. And we took that shining example of what to do right, and then we threw it in the garbage. And so we said, oh, okay, I got a new idea. Let's just attack everyone. Uh, let's bomb Iraq, let's bomb Afghanistan. Let's do coups in uh, Latin America and uh, Africa over and over again. Let's steal their resources. And if they ever do a democracy and they say, hey, hey this is the, the resources of the people, including Guatemala. Let's crush their de democracy and pretend we're fighting communism. That's just, those are all facts. If you don't know it, you're ignorant. That's okay, I love you, go read up on it, okay? And so now, what we could do is we could fix it. And one of the great things about fixing it is, then you wouldn't have as much illegal immigration. Because then their economies would, do we have an outpouring of illegal immigration from Germany or from Japan? Scandinavian countries? No, because we help rebuild them. And they're great trading partners, and they don't have to flee Germany. Last time, by the way, after World War I, we didn't do that with Germany. Instead, we crushed them. And what happened after that? World War II. So we already know what works and what doesn't. Right. And instead of Biden, a so-called Democrat, going down there in Kamala Harris and saying, guys, we got you. Okay, we're gonna have the courage to invest in these countries because we think it's gonna help us and you, right? They go down there and they yell at him. Don't come. Don't come, don't come, okay? And that's just stupid old Washington thinking by Biden and Kamala Harris. And and guys, last thing is, please, please do nuance. I, I, I don't understand anybody in any camp that just never says, oh no, that my camp is never wrong. 
We've called out AOC before, we've called, very much called out Bernie. We've called out everybody that is in our so-called side, okay? It depends, what did they do? Did they fight, did they not fight? Which policy were they for or not? But but there's mindless people on all sides. I'm a Kamala Harris fan, so I think it's great to yell at Guatemalans. She's so great for yelling at Guatemalans, she's the best. Why, why, why do you do that? Why are you, and I only, it's only because of this story that I'm picking on K Hive or whatever. But it applies to almost all the camps. They just shut off their brain. No, what? Biden is the best. Kamala Harris is the best. I'm not going to think about it. No, Biden and Kamala Harris are the worst. I'm going to help Trump. What? What? Just please do nuance. I think the worst thing that voters could do is play into the very intentional cults of personality that both parties create in order to distract us from the issues that we should be critical of. And so there are no friends in politics. And I'm specifically talking about these people in positions of power. They were supposed to have this type of tug and pull relationship with them because they're supposed to serve our best interests. And if you have like this, if you fall into this like cult of personality culture where you think that like one politician or the other can't do any wrong, then you're not gonna be able to do what you're supposed to do as an active member of a democratic process. Hold them accountable, pressure them and get what you want. Make them bend to your will, not the other way around. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.